the second season premiere was quite uh, funny. Okay. It was a joke of the history of the show, in a way. Okay. So the, what was it? I don't remember. So, Mr. Like Fox. Glad you're giving us another shot. Yes, right. Uh, yes, was it Mr. Fox? Yeah. Thank you for glad you see you came to your senses and gave us another shot. Um, yeah, look. Just, uh, I think ironically, they, I don't know if they really thought that through or what the connotation was, it's just the guy's name happened to be Mr. Fox. <laughs> it was really weird, you know? Um, so, I'm certainly grateful and happy that they did um, give us another shot. Uh, Fox, Kevin Riley, Peter Rice, those guys. I'm grateful to Zoe Deschanel for having a show that uh, we could follow. Um, Martha Plimpton, uh, I, I went to school with Martha Plimpton, so it's fun to be on a similar network or same network with her. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's to get the opportunity to be here um, after, because this show has had a very, very interesting history. It's, it's, it's kind of fun and kind of exciting and for something like this to uh, succeed or continue on hypothetically or potentially would be a phenomenal laugh kind of at the industry and how it uh, you know, will take things away before they are given a chance or a shot to sort of grow and shine and uh, for everybody to kind of gel and come together and let it build an audience. How did you guys react to the um, reshuffling of cast between the two seasons? Obviously you lost um, you know, a couple of some, well, more minor characters, I guess. But I What's it, say it again? You more. lost a couple of, I guess, more minor characters, but obviously sure. Odette with her... Um, of course. House, she's only going to be in a few episodes this season. Right. So how's that sort of affected everyone? Well, um, look, it's uh, it's part of the business. It's just how it goes. You try not to feed into it too much. Uh, I loved all the actors that were here last year. I thought they were all great. Um, I think they wanted to uh, introduce a little, I guess it was a little uh, boy heavy, you know, on one side. So they needed, in order to, to balance things out a little bit, to introduce uh, some femininity into the show. Um, you know, of course, I was willing to like do a few of them in drag. I would have been fine with that. <laughs> I'd been in Key West. I'd seen a few drag shows. I thought they were great. I would have done it, but uh, that wasn't the way they wanted to go. So they uh, they brought in Megan and uh, and Aaron Richards, and, and I couldn't be happier that they're a part of the team. I think they're they're great. What, what have you personally brought to the role? I mean, I know there's the Star Trek. Chair. What's that? Other than? The Star Trek chair. Yes. Try yeah, yeah. And, um, you're Captain big, Kirk's chair. That's yeah, it. Yes. You're, you're a big uh, Trekkie fan, so well, maybe not. No, I am. I love Star Trek. Look, I grew up with it. I was a kid. I pretended to be Captain Kirk. I loved it. It's it's definitely a part of my uh, life and history. Uh, I just went and saw. William Shatner's one-man show that he did here at the Pantages, and he was great, and he was very gracious afterwards, which was very nice. Um, what have you brought to it? What have I brought to it? Well, uh, let's see. I mean, the... Any sayings that Oz says that comes from you? A lot of sayings that Oz yeah. says? Quite honestly, I um, when I first got the script, like for the pilot, uh, Oz was not a very flushed-out character. He had the name, but that was it. There wasn't really anything else to it. So um, I figured, look, I got nothing to lose here. I don't really know these guys very well, Adam Goldberg, Seth Gordon, Doug Robinson, but what the heck? You know, they say they would like me to do this show, and they say that they can write things very quickly. So I figured, okay, I'll give you guys an opportunity. I just threw some things out there. I said, I would love it if this guy did have the Captain Kirk chair. I thought that would be nice. I would like it if he was, uh, you know, somebody who purchased things from Sky Mall. Um, and there, there were a few other elements that I, that I threw in there. And uh, they put them all in. They put them all into the script. Now, of course, then we came to shooting the pilot. And the challenge that uh, you're faced with, once you put these things in the script and everybody loves it and thinks it's great, then you have to get the lawyers to agree and sign off. And, you know, because all of these items are very highly licensed and merchandised and, and big deals particularly the Captain Kirk chair. So um, I guess the next thing I was able to bring to the show and the character was uh, some personal relationships that I have. You know, I was able to kind of, I think in a very Aussian sort of fashion, circumvent the lawyers and go directly to, um, you know, the head of Paramount 
who used to be my manager, uh, who was able to contact Les Moonves, who's got all the rights to Star Trek merchandise and all those items at CBS. And uh, they were, he was uh, very kindly able to ask permission for us to use the chair, and then we were able to do it. So that was kind of like the beginning. And that's a long story, but that was, that was it. And I only, the longer version of the story is that um, the, the head of Viacom, I'd only met him uh, maybe two or three years earlier, before any of this was going on, I'd met him because 10 years earlier, when I, was having, when I had my son, uh, I went and got my GED. And, uh, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation heard about that and asked me to become an you know, ambassador for education. So I ended up going to Washington, D.C., which is where I met Philippe Dalman, who's the head of Viacom. So all these things just kind of serendipitously led to me sitting in the Captain Kirk chair, which, you know, hey, look, I was thrilled and uh, glad to have that opportunity. Teenager, right? well, What's that? Son's a teenager. He's almost, well, he's 13. Does he, well, does he watch the show? Uh, well, quite honestly, he's in, uh, he's, he's been uh, doing a lot of testing lately. So uh, I haven't uh, actually even communicated with him about it. It's funny, when they do hit a certain age, uh, I have found that, and he is also living in, um, Pennsylvania now. Uh, he came out here a couple weeks ago to visit me, and the only time I saw him was when I was watching the Laker game, and he was sitting on the floor. Tell us how I know, um, it's frightening. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> think, think about that. Uh, I'm sitting at home in my living room watching TV, and I turn the channels, and my son is at the Laker game sitting on the floor. And he's 13. It's like, what happened? But, you know, this, uh, this is very weird. That was a weird moment you know, for me. But yeah, that's how it goes. He's, he's developing a life and seems to be going the right way. Can I peed next to you, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so you on the way there, and you on the way there, and you were standing right there. That's it. That was the moment. Yeah, I just connected that. Can you talk about how um, Oz has grown and developed over the two seasons? Obviously, the second season, he's not top dog anymore. His fingers yeah. are taken down a peg, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, look, yeah, I was, uh, I think, the first season, you know, I guess in the identification of this character and this Oz guy, this international man of mystery, very fascinating, very interesting idea, but I don't know how accessible that is to, I guess, audiences in, in some regard. So um, I think they wanted to make the choice to make uh, Oz somewhat more relatable, somewhat more human. Um, uh, they've been open to ideas and suggestions in that arena that uh, there are certain character defects that Oz possesses that uh, I've been able to suggest and incorporate and Adam has once again proven to be somebody who's uh, very open to these ideas, which is just fantastic. Does, like, does Contra's money problems kind of go up throughout the season or are they pretty much... Pretty much. I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're, Oz was ha forced to sell this company to this co corporation OCP, which you know includes... Uh, Megan's introduction into the show, um, but yeah, it's a result of certain problems that he has. But then at the end of the day, which um, is something I think Adam and I have always talked about, Oz is, a, is an eight moves ahead type of character. So I feel like there's always some kind of puppet mastery going on. There's a reason and a manipulation and some kind of game behind it that none of us will know until episode 13. So Would let you, me ask you this. Yeah. If there was a Freaky Friday episode and you could play any other character. Freaky Friday episode. Yes. Can you play any other character other than your own? So yeah. Which one would it be? God. Uh, Creepy Carol, I guess. I, <laughs> I like her. I think she's without a doubt. Jennifer is like the best. Uh, I'm just so grateful just to have her presence. Uh, uh, she, she brings so much to, uh, she's the best punchline ever in any scene. She's great. She's just great.